this is one of two new tank areas. Early in 2013, we moved all these specimens that are in these large grey tanks out of an old building into this new purpose-built area. Uh, it's air conditioned, which is much, much better for the specimens. They'll be around here a long, long time. The nice thing about this area is that, as you can see, I'm moving this compactor unit very easily, just with one finger. Hey, strong! The top units we can get to by a ladder, the bottom units we can actually slide out. So despite the fact that there's 300 kilos of alcohol and fishes in here, they're easy to access. So much, much better from a uh, workplace health and safety uh, point of view. This is a basking shark. This actual fish is, it was about seven metres long. This is just his head. Obviously his eye, his snout, very, very rough skin, lots of sharp denticles. And as you can see, unlike a lot of sharks, it has tiny, tiny little teeth. And that is because it swims along through the open ocean with its mouth open, open acting like a giant vacuum cleaner, sucking up small organisms. Okay, people have five senses, or they're the five senses you're taught about. Sharks have another sense. They've got electroreception. They can detect electricity. And they have special organs in their snouts that are at the base of pores that you can see here when I press the snout of this goblin shark. And they can actually swim along the bottom and detect voltages of about a millionth of a volt. And in this case, with the goblin shark, it'll send out its amazing jaws to snap up what's in the bottom. These two, there are two heads in here plus a small one. They're about three and a half metres long, the animal. And they're actually caught in trawls, which is quite remarkable. It's a bit like flying over the Amazon in a helicopter and catching a monkey. Quite extraordinary. But you can see the tiny, the, the very pointy teeth, quite unlike a lot of the sharks you see, you know, in fiction, the jaws type sharks. These teeth are obviously used to quickly seize and swallow prey. Then there's no cutting involved with these teeth. So that's it, this is a goblin shark. Okay, these large tanks along the wall here contain all sorts of different fishes, mostly sharks and rays, there's a wedge fish in there, there's an opar. But what I wanted to show you was this guy in here. The collection has, wait for it, uh, a bunch of white sharks. Which, um, we didn't collect this, of course, but it was brought to us dead. This here is a juvenile white shark. It's a little female, she's about two meters long. At this stage, she's not even mature. A white shark doesn't mature until it's about four metres in length, so this is just a little baby girl. We've also got in here a bull shark. Oh, they headed one. Perhaps I should show you something about the teeth and tell you something about the shark teeth as well. White sharks, it's interesting, as they grow, the shape of the teeth change. This one here, whoops. <laughs> This one here, some of the teeth are broken, but you can see the teeth are actually quite, well, acute, quite pointy shaped. When they mature, the teeth broaden, and of course they have different diets. The reason this one has quite pointy, acute shaped teeth is because it's eating small fish and squid, whereas when they mature and they have the steak knife type teeth, it's because they change their diets to marine mammals, seals and what have you.